In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to create this render based on this photo. Hello everyone and welcome to HM Studio. So here is how it goes. First of all, we're going to do the lighting, then we'll make some materials and after that we're going to do some post-production. Alright, let's start. As you can see here, we have the model ready and I have the original picture in the background so we could compare them together. If I hide all the geometries from here, uh, you can see that they perfectly matched. By the way, if you want to download this file so you could follow along as I go, you can find it on my Patreon page and I'll put the link into the description if you're interested. Okay, how can we use a picture in the background? By pressing Alt and B together and selecting Use File and loading your image from here. To begin with, let's have a look at our render settings. What I love about Corona is that you basically don't need to change anything in your render settings. These adjustments work for almost 99% of scenarios. So we can leave everything with its default value and just start off with the lighting process. Okay, let's take a look at this photo. Based on the color of the sky and the shape of the shadows, we can say that it has an overcast situation where the sun is behind the clouds and therefore we're getting these semi-soft shadows here. So we still have the sun shining through the window, but it has to have like a very huge size and probably low intensity to give us this type of shadows. To begin with, let's go ahead and create a Corona Sun either by clicking on its icon over here or from the create panel, light, Corona and Corona Sky. Now let's click, drag and drop the sun into the scene and move it up to somewhere around here. Afterward, while the sun is selected, go to the Modify tab and add the Corona Sky into the Environment slot by clicking on this button over here. Now if I open the Environment window from the Rendering menu, you can see that a Corona Sky has been assigned to the Environment slot. Alright, the next step is to set up the Light Mixer so we could adjust the lights uh, while we're rendering or even after our render is finished. So let's go to the Scene tab and generate the light mixer by clicking here and selecting generate. Now if you go to the element tab, uh, you can find these new elements that have been generated for us. Okay, let's run the interactive rendering to see what we have so far. It's completely burned out and to fix this issue, we have to have the highlight burn option and tweak it but in Corona 8, it's not here anymore. To add it to the list, you gotta click on this button over here and select the Reinhardt Highlight Compression and increase its value up to 10 like this. Okay, looks good. Let's take a look at these shadows over here. They're pretty sharp, right? And that's because of the sun size. To make them smoother, we have to have a bigger sun and for that, we have to increase the sun size. So while the sun is selected, Let's increase its size up to 64, which is as big as we can go. Shadows are looking good, but the sun's intensity is still higher than what we need. So let's decrease its value under the light mix tab until we're satisfied with the result. If we compare them, they look almost the same, but I think we can move the sun a little bit higher so we get the same direction. Okay, that looks great. Alright, now we can start with making some materials and we're going to start off with this black wooden wall. So let's open up the material editor by pressing the M key on your keyboard. I've already gathered the textures that we're going to use here. So let's drop these into the material editor by dragging and dropping them like this. The first thing I'm going to do with these textures is to adjust their size. So let's double click on them then enable use real world scale then putting in the size that I want my textures to be and in this case I'm going with 400 by 200 centimeters I'm gonna do the same thing for the roughness map as well now let's drop a corona physical material into the grid and connect the diffuse texture to its base color node okay since we want these textures to be black we have to use a color correction node and we have to put it right in the middle here. 
since we don't have any colors in the material let's desaturate the texture like this and we want it to be black right let's go to the advanced mode and decrease the gamma value until it's dark enough all right now we can apply this material to all the objects that need to be black All right, now we need a UVW map modifier and we're going to use the box mapping mode. And let's enable the real world map scale. Okay. And if I isolate these objects, you'll see that the texture is not vertical. To fix it, we should activate the UVW maps gizmo and with the rotate tool, rotate it by 90 degrees. Okay, it looks fine. But we have to have another UVW map for the horizontal geometries. Let's select them and apply an edit poly modifier to them. Then select the horizontal geometries and apply another UVW map. Okay, now they're looking fine. Now let's go to the camera view and run the interactive rendering to see the result as we go. Here in this picture you can see that different areas have different glossiness or roughness values. We've already talked about this in the previous tutorial, but to recap what you've already learned, I can say that in this situation we have to use a texture for our roughness or reflection glossiness. Since we're using Corona physical material, we have to go with the roughness map. Here's the texture that we're going to use. So basically where we have the darker areas, it will look glossier in the render. And where we have the brighter areas, it will look matte. I think you already got the point that it's the opposite of glossiness, right? So let's go ahead and connect it to the roughness. And this will be the instant result super glossy and that tells us that this texture is too dark right now to adjust its brightness and also contrast we can use an output map let's apply it here in the middle double click on it go to the output rollout and enable the curve by clicking right here now let's go ahead and put a point right here in the middle now select the move tool and by moving this point, we're basically manipulating the midtones, right? The darker it is, the glossier the result will be, and vice versa. What we need here is a smooth curve. So let's right click on this point and make it Bezier smooth. Now we're gonna just have to find that sweet spot for this point. So we get almost the same look that we have in the reference image. You can always adjust the other two points as well, but that depends on your texture. How dark are the black tones and how bright are the highlights? Like in this case, I'd like to give the glossy areas a bit more like a matte finish by brightening the black areas. Obviously, we don't have the exact same texture as we have in the photo, so there's no way that we could get the same result, right? And this is as close as we can get. Obviously, if you put some more time into it, you might get better results. And that's always true about everything, right? Okay, I'm going to use the same texture as for the bump map simply by connecting it to the base bump node. But I don't want it to be too much. So I would just decrease its value down to 0 0.5. Let me zoom in a little bit and see if that's enough. I guess we can decrease it a little bit more. Now we can do the whole thing for this yellowish wood as well. But before we do that, let me just randomize these textures. I almost forgot to do that. What we need to do is to add a Corona UVW randomizer to each one of these nodes. So let's go ahead and create one by dragging it into the grid. And let's do the adjustments. Okay, 
Let's randomize the textures based on elements. And you can see each one of these panels is one element. Then let's go with one step in U, one in V, and 360 for the rotation. But we only want them to have 180 degrees steps, right? I mean, we don't want them to rotate like 10 or 30 degrees. We want them to rotate at least 180 degrees every time. So they look straight after all, right? Now we gotta make two more copies out of this one by holding shift and just dragging it. All right, now let's use each one of these for one of these nodes like this. Okay, now we can go ahead and make a copy out of this material and its textures together in order to create that yellow material with this base. So let's go ahead and select everything, hold shift and just drag it. That's all. All right, now go ahead and select all the geometries with this yellow wood material and assign this new material to them. Now we need to add another UVW map for these geometries. Let's go ahead and put it on box mode and enable use real world scale. Then we need to reset all the adjustments that we've made to this color correction node. So put this one on zero, one, and that's all. Now let's properly adjust the UVW map. Let me isolate everything. All right, these ones uh, needs to be vertical. Select the gizmo and rotate it by 90 degrees. All right, they look fine. We just need to add a separate UVW map for this geometry over here. Once again, box mapping mode and real world scale. Okay, cool. Okay, now let's go back to the camera view and start the interactive rendering to see what we have. The first thing I noticed is that in the reference, we don't have that harsh highlights anymore. So we have to make the roughness map a bit smoother and that's really easy. We just need to select that output map and reset its adjustments by clicking here and just move the black tones up closer to the brighter ones and that's basically it. All right, now the color. What we have in the reference is way brighter than what we have in the render. So let's select the color correction node and increase the gamma value up to two. It looks way better now. Color wise, they're still a bit different, but I would take care of that in Photoshop. Honestly, it's way easier to do it in V-Ray with CryptoMat and the uh, adjustment layers that we have in the frame buffer. But in Corona, you still have to do it with the materials. You have to adjust the materials, the colors and everything, and it's time consuming. And I'd rather to do it in post-production. So for the next material, we can go with these. Let's create a Corona physical material, change its color to black and assign the material to the objects. Now let me render them to see what we have. Here we just need to reduce the roughness value to get the same result. As you can see, the colors are different here. Uh, we can make some little adjustments in the frame buffer, but let's keep it for the post-production part. I guess they look fine. And for the last one, we can take care of this carpet over here. Honestly, I couldn't figure out in this picture if it's a carpet, concrete, epoxy or whatever, but I'm gonna go with carpet. So for this one, we can actually use the Corona material library by clicking on this button over here, then go to the carpet category and select literally any one of these materials since we're just going to use it as a base. 
and just drag it onto this geometry and drop it. All right, we have the material. Now let's open up the material editor and pick its material like this. Since this surface looks kind of smooth, I would completely get rid of the displacement. And as you can see, the diffuse texture looks a bit different on the reference photo, so I'm gonna get rid of that. I've already picked another texture for this, so let's just delete the diffuse texture and replace it with this one. First of all, I'm gonna adjust its size and then I need a color correction map to adjust the colors and also brightness as well. But this time, let's go with the Corona color correction map. Zero point three for the gamma. Okay, that's good. Now let's increase the contrast a bit. Four is enough. Uh, we also need less saturation, so let's decrease it a little bit. And we can adjust the hues also. All right, I guess what we've done so far is good enough and I would prefer to render this out and do the rest in Photoshop. But before I start rendering, I need to add some elements into the element list. We might not use them all, but it's always good to have them for the post-production process. I'm going with direct, indirect, reflect, wire color, and ID. That's all. Okay, let's set the noise limit to 3. Activate the Corona high quality denoiser. And increase the size of the render and just hit render. Okay, I'm gonna be right back in just a second. All right, as you can see, the render has finished, but right out of the bat, I've noticed that the intensity is way higher than it must be. And we can still do some minor adjustments in the frame buffer before we start the post-production. To begin with, I'm going to reduce the exposure value. We can make it a bit cooler with the white balance like this. Maybe a little bit of greenish tint. A bit more contrast. And maybe reducing the highlight burn value a little bit. Great. I should have reduced the bumpiness of this material before rendering, but it's too late now. If you're following along, make sure to reduce the bump value down to 0.05 or something. Okay, now we can save the render with all of its elements from here. Just give it a name and save it with the JPEG format. Now let's open up Photoshop and start. Okay, let's drag and drop the render in the Photoshop like this. I think we did pretty good already and there are just some minor adjustments that we need to do. First of all, I think we can make the foreground a bit brighter. So let's add a level adjustment layer, make the whole image brighter like this and mask the foreground with the gradient map. Now let's work on this yellow material. And for that, we need the wire color element. Let's just drop it on top of this image like this. And with the magic wand tool, select the blue colors, create a group, 
and mask it with this button over here. Now whatever we do in this group will only affect these areas, all right? The first thing I noticed is the ceiling's color and brightness. It should be way brighter, so let's another level adjustment layer. And since I only want it to affect the ceiling, I have to mask that area like this. Let's make the selected area black in the mask by pressing Alt and Backspace, which basically fills the selected area with the foreground color. Then we have to invert the mask by pressing Ctrl and I together while the mask is selected. Just make sure your mask is already selected, otherwise it will invert the layer. Okay, now let's click here and make the ceiling brighter like this. We can also reduce its yellow color with a hue saturation adjustment layer, but we want it to only work on the ceiling, right? So I have to clip it to the layer below with this button over here. Now click on this button, then click on the ceiling and drag the mouse towards the left to reduce the saturation of the selected area. Maybe we can use a color balance to adjust uh, the colors a tiny bit more. Okay, now let's work on the wall for a bit. I'm gonna use another level adjustment and I want it to work on all the wooden areas except the ceiling. I've already masked out the ceiling area, so we already have the mask, right? We just need to invert it. So let's just go ahead and copy this mask by holding Alt and dragging it here. Now we can simply invert it by pressing Ctrl I. All right, now let's give it a little bit of contrast with these two handles. All right, now once again, we can use another hue saturation adjustment. Clip it to the layer below. And this time, change the hue of the yellow colors like this. A little bit less saturation and maybe less lightness. Okay, cool. Actually, I don't want these adjustments on this geometry and I have to exclude it from the mask by simply selecting it and making that part of the mask black by pressing Alt and Backspace. All right, I think we can make the black material a bit darker. So let's repeat the whole process for this one as well. I guess we need to do the same thing for the carpet as well. I mean, it needs to be darker and its color needs to be a little bit different. So let's go ahead and mask it and start working on it. Okay, here comes the interesting part. We need to change the background and for that we're going to use a picture. But firstly, we need to mask that area and we need the alpha element for that. Oh, unfortunately, I had forgotten to add it to the elements, but luckily Corona always renders that element and we can get it from the frame buffer. There it is. Just copy it from here, go back to Photoshop, create a new file and paste it with Ctrl V. 
Let's add a level adjustment layer and make the darker areas completely black by moving this handle all the way to here. Okay, great. Now we have to flatten the image from here. Then let's copy everything by pressing Ctrl A, then Ctrl C. Go back to the main image and create a new layer in the channels. Then paste the alpha map into this channel. Okay, now hold the control key on your keyboard and click on this part of the layer, which will select the black areas in the channel, right? Now that we have the selection, we can select the RGB channel, go to the layers tab and select the very first layer and mask it by clicking on this button like this. As you can see, this area is transparent now and we can simply place our picture back there, right? For this part, you can find some random image of Google, but uh, I usually use Vizhopper for this type of stuff. They have pretty cool high quality backgrounds and all sort of uh, cutouts on their website. And I'm sure you would love them, especially the 2D characters that come uh, with the shadows and everything. I'll put their link into the description if you're interested. Okay, for this image, I've downloaded this one. Let's drag and drop it into Photoshop. Then drag it into our image like this and put it below every other layer. Now by pressing Ctrl T together, we can scale it down and place it properly. Now we need to make a white layer behind it uh, to fill up the empty spaces by creating a solid color, making it white and putting it below this layer. Let's go ahead and create a level adjustment layer and brighten up the background like this. Now we need a selective color layer adjustment on top of that to adjust the yellow mm -hmm. and green colors in order to get the same colors that we have in the reference. All right, that's good enough for now. The next step is to bring back the reflections that we had on the glass, right? So let's go ahead and drop the reflection element on top of these background layers and change its blending mode to screen. There you have it. I'm gonna work on the colors a little bit more. We have to work on the mattress too and get rid of this reddish color and maybe give it a little bit of cyanish tone. That looks good, but I think we don't need this color balance to affect the sides of the mattress. So let's just pick a black brush and paint it over this side while the layers and mask is selected. All right, perfect. I think we're close enough. And as we did before in my previous tutorial, we can use a camera raw filter for the final touch. So let's create an empty layer on top of all the other layers and create a collapse layer out of everything below that by pressing Ctrl, I, Shift, and E together. Great. Now let's convert it to a smart object from here and apply a camera raw filter to it. First of all, let's give it some clarity. Okay, less contrast. Maybe stronger highlights. And brighter shadows. Now we can go to the HSL adjustment tab and work on the colors a little bit more. By the way guys, I'll be sharing the 3D file of this project, also this Photoshop file that I'm currently working on, on my Patreon page and you can get them both from there. There will be some missing objects and assets in the files uh, since I didn't create them and you have to purchase them from their creators, but for the most part I guess it will be very useful to have them if you want to follow the tutorial. 
Okay, I've put some more time into this image and the final result looks like this, which will be in the same Photoshop file that I'm sharing with you. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section and I will try to answer each and every one of you. I hope you liked this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe for the next one. Have a great day and I'll see you soon.